Jesus. <laughs> It was the worst <laughs> gag I could come up with to start this video. Hey, everybody, welcome to part two, two of our look at portable augmented reality glasses and the micro computers that love them. Quick interjection while I'm editing this video, I could have sworn that we shot a separate little segment just detailing some of our relationships with these companies. Both TK and I have done sponsored and promo videos for Xreal and for Rokid. This video that you're watching right now has had no influence or any kind of sponsorship from those brands, but we just wanted to detail what our relationships have been with these brands in the past, and now we can get back to the rest of the video. You should probably stop and go to TK's channel to watch part one, part one. where we detail some of the pros and cons, oh, yep. some of the differences between the Rokid Max and the Xreal Air. These two companies are making a lot of noise today. They're giving us different options to power those glasses. So for part two of this examination, we're going to be comparing not just the glasses, we're going to be looking at the, the Rokid brain. Station, yeah. the brain the brains. for Rokid, and the Xreal Beam, the brain for X Real. I was really expecting more of a showdown for the brains, but instead, yep. I think what we arrive at is bookends. They are completely different products. What do these augment? What do they do to, to improve the experience? The glasses are great. They are by themselves a great monitor in your pocket that you can take outdoors and you can enjoy content with them for by sure. plugging them straight in. One of the main criticisms that we get with the glasses a lot uh, are people who try to plug them into iPhones. iPhones don't power <laughs> things very well. No, no. People who plug them into pixels. Pixels don't have video output. No. And then you have to have other kinds of cabling, power solutions, and adapters for products like the Nintendo Switch. Exactly. The Switch does require a little dock to be able to... A little dongle just to get yeah. that power HDMI signal out to the glasses. Each of these the companies... companies are looking at ways that you can power the, the glasses directly and solve some of the compatibility issues with phones and tablets and other computers that don't directly support video over USB-C with the power that these glasses need. While keeping both of these systems mobile. That's the big mobile. key there. Mm -hmm. And you're able to go in the car, on a plane, anywhere where there's an internet connection, this is going to actually give you a mobile experience experience for including sure. all the functions i have to send a huge shout out to the communities at both the uh, the subreddits for xreal and for rokid because you'll see people tinker by building their own modular mobile computers <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like there's a bandolier of like batteries and a, a raspberry pi and all this stuff to get this experience and that's what these companies are trying to help consumers circumvent exactly. so i want to start the rokid station i think is the one that's easier to understand well it's easier to relate to i feel like a lot a lot of people yeah. probably have used either an Android TV or a Google TV solution. Any or smart Chromecast. TV. Exactly. Yeah. A UI element that goes on your TV that enables you to connect to applications, your Netflix, your Hulu, your uh, favorite uh, streaming mm -hmm. content. That's going to basically be a solution that is very much mirrored here. The Rokid looks a lot like my Chromecast remote because it's basically a Chromecast remote. They literally took a Chromecast. Well, I mean, a Chromecast. A Chromecast, yeah. put a power back in here. There's a 5,000 milliampere battery in here. Gave us video output and the ability of basically running video straight from it, but also to it. Mm -hmm. You can cast things to it, and that's why we're saying it's a Chromecast. So if you're familiar with that, this is literally all that's the same thing. Here. Or even power your device. If you're using a smartphone, you can connect to this and charge it. Now, this is going to be more expensive than an Android TV or Chromecast or Roku or any of those solutions, but you can do double duty with it. So you could plug this into your TV, use it as your main TV interface. experience or exactly. interface, and then pop the cable, plug your glasses in, your Android TV, your actual TV box goes anywhere the glasses can and go. That's the biggest thing for me. This is mm -hmm. something that's already out there. It's more familiar. And the Rokid, I think, really captured it very well, making them more functional because this is one of the things before. This simplifies it and it makes it more, I, I feel like, again, I keep saying the word relatable, <laughs> but it is literally, it's yeah. that, that's how we enjoy our tech. How does this relate to something that I've used before and did I enjoy it? This is actually out of the box. It's pretty much going straight for that. So I wrote an article on my page Patreon about how I totally missed the boat on these two. I thought techies would be way more interested in the beam. Yeah. But from putting out videos on both of these brands, I feel like there's been a more positive response because this is a little bit easier to understand. The glasses have sensors in them that can do basic three degrees of head tracking. They yeah. call it body anchoring. This Rokid station is not going to play into any of those sensors. It's purely outputting Where, a video source. Wherever you look, you're going to see that big screen projection. And mm -hmm. it's not like AR where you can pin it somewhere look away and then look back at that content. But that also helps onboard people who are unfamiliar with this hardware. 
Because yeah. I feel the techier you start someone off with, people do not know what face displays are all about. It's it, Again, it's that whole relatability function in there. The glasses and what you're getting out of them, with it's very we're, nice. We're making ergonomic. this sound like it's really simple, but yeah. it is an Android TV. So anything you can do with Android TV, you can do here too. Say you want to play a PC game from your Steam Deck or from your beefy gaming Desktop PC. PC. Exactly. You can load the Steam Link app, and then you've got a face display that can rival one of the largest TVs in your home. You can also move your content around just like Android TV. Connect the controller and you're, they're basically wireless. But that that's where we have to transition. The Rokid Station is the box that delivers the content, mm -hmm. but doesn't do any of the augmented reality. That's, I feel like, a big part that we need to make sure the distinction between the two. This doesn't. This, this does. Yeah. This is the box that does all of the augmented reality and gives you no content. So this is the harder it's product the to explain. It's almost it's like they need to get married or something. It's funny. To a certain Plugging one into the other kind of works. But the X-Real Beam is the computer and the brain that interacts with all of the sensors on the X-Real glasses yeah. and delivers fluid, stable tracking to every video output device that you can use with it. Exactly. It's a little headier to explain. And a lot of the stuff is going to be really unfamiliar if you've never put like VR, AR, mixed reality glasses on your face. Mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to other uh, like parents, yeah. you know, from uh, my daughter's uh, friends. They don't have the language to describe this stuff. They, it's very unfamiliar to them. They don't know what this experience is like. X-Real Beam is even that little step more difficult to explain if you've never put any lenses in front of your face like that. It does a lot more computational processing mm -hmm. to not only pin the content that you're watching, move it with you if you want to, change the actual size of the display. Both of these classes have applications that you can install on your smartphone. This mm -hmm. is how you're going to update the software and gives you a few functional three-dimensional uh, options. But essentially, you're housed within an app. This is where the limitation is, where you're not really able to bring in third-party sources like what we get here. The Beam is really doing all of the heavy lifting. So one of the things that we we can always sort of point to, the more contained VR headsets. Mm -hmm. So something like an Oculus or the new HTC mixed reality mixed headset reality. that they have. Yeah. It's a fully enclosed computer, but there are really multiple little computers built in. Our more traditional CPU, GPU, mm -hmm. SOC arrangement, that's just for running the game. But the game then talks to a bunch of little sensors that track all of the head movements the movement, yep. and all of those work together to give you that immersive experience. This is like having the computer part just for the content. This is like having all of the extra little sensors that the content is going to interact with. I can plug my Steam Deck. That's the, the computer the for all the content. And then I get a smoother, more image stabilized head tracking experience. Or I can take that Steam Deck content and pin it to one part of the my biggest, The biggest view. difference there, yeah. And when I look away, the Steam Deck is gonna stay where I pinned it, but I can look away and see other things too. So you can float a TV out in space in front of you, and it's going to stay where you put it. The beam doesn't serve you the content. And I find this to be really helpful when you're already traveling with something like, we both played with like the Surface Pro, yep. the Robo and Kala. Exactly. And you can plug this in as a second monitor and then pin that monitor. Right above or to the right, to the wherever side, you want wherever it. you want it. And so I can look down at the actual tablet screen and then look up at an even larger second display and then look down and look up and look down and look up. A lot of the stuff that you see in something like the Apple Vision Pro Key note mm -hmm. is already practically accessible if it's a little less techy cool than what Apple was showing off. You can already be doing some of that work today with really affordable and really accessible computers. But this is the big challenge is knowing what little computer brain what is, it, is yeah. really going to work for you. Which experience you're looking for. If you're looking more for content and just being able to cast things to it and watch shows, I feel like this does a better job on it because it actually has an all-inclusive experience. Mm -hmm. Built-in, charging, everything in there. It's really more up to you to pick where you want to watch the content. And I feel like that's where the flexibility. While the X-Reel and the Beam, it's where you start wanting to multitask. Like when you were explaining mm -hmm. the whole editing, that was the number one thing I, for me when I was editing content on my show, on my laptop, when I was traveling with uh, with my Rokids, the display moves with me all the time. So yeah. I had to basically make it into a mirror. I wasn't using it as a second display. I was using it as a mirror display so that I'm able to basically stop looking at my computer and just look through the glasses. Yeah. Having a second display would have been a much big game changer Having for me. Having a workspace me. in one place, a preview window 
window in the other and the exactly. ability to control where those live. And I'll also go one further. So both of these have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can pair accessories to both exactly. of them. Exactly, keyboard. Mouse, yeah. But with this being Android TV, it's using more of that Google Home casting. This will work as a Chromecast to screen share with a Pixel. Yeah. Because Pixels don't support other wireless sharing protocols. Casting or anything like that, yeah. But the Xreal Beam can work as a mirror cast device. Oh, okay. So if you want to mirror your Pixel Fold, you would want to use a Roku, yep. and it'll mirror that, cast it, it's going to work really well. If you want to use Moto Ready 4 or Samsung DeX wirelessly, well, that's not going to play as well with the Roku, but it's going to go directly to the mirror cast built into the Xreal Beam. So that way you also don't even need to be tethered to the source that you're putting out. Also, a lot of Windows computers are going to support that mirror cast standard also. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Microsoft has worked on that. Exactly. It's already built in a lot of a lot of tablets, smartphones are actually supported. But at the end of the day, it is again Android TV inclusive box to versus, versus sensors. Sensors, multitasking, um, and, and I feel like the experience is gonna come down to what you're looking for to get out of it. That's where both of these Again, it, it's not the which one should you buy. Again, it's, yeah, because they're not. You, you already have gadgets in your home. Exactly. And so now you would want to decide do you want a new standalone? Uh, media streaming solution, or do you already have some uh, devices that you would want a bigger display to work on? We were playing around with them. It does kind of work where you can feed the I was, Roku I was about to just go into, into yeah. the Xreal <laughs> beam, and then you have to use the Xreal Air glasses because the sensors work with the beam and the Xreal right, glasses. The yep. sensors won't work with the beam and, and the, the Roku glasses, but that does work. You can supply the content to the head tracking sensors to the Xreal glasses to put out an image. It's, it's getting pretty good. We've got like all of the pieces of the chain and we're watching these companies iterate very quickly, very aggressively on making them all more consumer accessible. From two or three years back when we both started oh, yeah. playing with TCLs, exactly. it was cool just being able to plug in some glasses, see a big image. Now we're really getting into the combinations of effects and head tracking and the technologies to bring more of this to a consumer level. Every generational upgrade, every time we're getting a big leap, either the rocket station or the X-Beam, uh, 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 X real beam. X real beam. There's so many just, different brands. There's real there's beam, beam, air, and station. So just take that note. Station. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you check out both of the videos. We talked about how the glasses work. Mm -hmm. We talked about how the station, how the, the brains, brains work. part of the conversation goes. At the end of the day, it's going to be a decision of what you feel like is the right combination that works for you. Which is why we want to hear down in the comments on TK's channel, we were asking you what you were looking for in face displays. Now, when it comes to content and augmented reality, what do you think is really going to move the needle on bringing this to more people? Give us those tasty hot takes Absolutely. down under the description. So folks, thank you so much for watching and sharing and subscribing to both of the channels, channels. checking out both of the videos. We've got a lot of other things planned for this conversation. And so if you've got any questions on that stuff, we've been living it yeah. for the last couple of years. We're happy to participate. We're happy to have those conversations. And we'd love to hear from you guys, of course. True. So folks, uh, thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe, all the YouTubery things. All the support has been amazing. Those yeah. of you who have been supporting the channels. And uh, you know, on my side, because this is my channel, those of you who have joined the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, those are some of the coolest tech geeks in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Uh, you know where you can find both of us Absolutely. across the social medias. We'll have links down below and we'll catch you all on the next video. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that one here. <laughs> That's my send off. <laughs> That's on the live stream, not on this one.